Welcome to this second week of the Lenten Retreat. My name is Father Damien Polly, and today I want to talk to you about the topic of fasting, very relevant in this Lenten season. When it comes to fasting, I think it's safe to say that it's not something that people look forward to or get excited about. It's usually because when we talk about fasting, we're fasting from something that we really enjoy, and therefore it can be a deprivation, it can be painful. But again, if we understand that it's done for a good purpose, it can bring great benefits and rewards into our life, and that's really what I want to talk about in this talk. As you'd be aware, fasting is not just something spoken about in relation to Christianity. People of all faiths and none fast for different reasons. On the purely physical level, as people are becoming more health conscious, fasting is often recommended as part of a diet and exercise regime to again bring health benefits to them. There can be, for instance, juice fasts and water fasts and carb fasts and the new trend of intermittent fasting to help people lose weight and also bring other health benefits. But spiritually speaking, fasting has a different meaning, and that's what I'd like to explore particularly in this talk. So why should we as Christians fast? Because we're Puritans and because the body is bad? No, of course not. The body is good, and the pleasures of the body are good. But sometimes they can become too domineering. They can start to control us, and therefore fasting is needed to bring about balance back into our lives. If we understand that disorder flows from original sin, then we can see how many of our desires, although good in many ways, can become disordered. We want too much of them, the desire for food just being one example. Our appetites and our sensual desires shouldn't dominate us, rather they should serve our good. And so if you have a sensual desire that you're finding is too dominant, I want to really encourage you to take on board this uh, talk on fasting because it's probably going to benefit you a lot. So what do we mean by fasting? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas notes very simply that fasting consists of taking only one meal a day. And this definition has been refined by the church in terms of what's allowed during Lent. We can also make a distinction between fasting and abstinence. When abstinence is, is used in reference to Lent, we're talking about abstaining from meat, particularly on Fridays. But then also on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, there is the obligation to abstain from meat, but also on those days to fast. So they are specific fast days in Lent. So where did this tradition of fasting come from? The discipline of fasting for a spiritual purpose has a long history and we see many examples of it, particularly in the Old Testament of the Bible, where fasting was often undertaken for different reasons, in sorrow for repentance for sins, or to accompany fervent prayer to God, for deliverance oftentimes from enemies, or for a particular intention to be answered. The idea was that fasting made one's prayer more acceptable to God. It was a way of demonstrating one's level of commitment before the Lord and also sorrow for sin. And these ideas remain valid today. God desires that we prove our love for him. And as the old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. Fasting was often used to beg for God's help and deliverance. And we see an amazing example with Queen Esther who fasted with the Jewish people for three days to ask God to deliver them from near certain annihilation. Then the prophet Daniel fasted for 21 days, eating only fruit and vegetables and drinking only water for the answer to a specific prayer. And then we have King David who fasted and prayed when his son got sick and he pleaded with God to spare his life. Fasting is often also associated with repentance in the Old Testament, like the time when the prophet Jonah was sent by God to the people of Nineveh to preach and saying only 40 days more in Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And the response of the people was that they believed in God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth and sat down in ashes. And what was the result? It says God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior and God relented. He did not inflict on them the disaster which he had threatened. So an example of fasting and prayer being powerfully answered. Then in the New Testament, of course, in this Lenten season, we see Jesus enduring those 40 days of prayer and fasting in the desert to spiritually strengthen him and prepare him for the coming temptations by the devil. Then during his mission, Jesus does not seem to emphasize fasting while his disciples are with him. When he's questioned about this by John's disciples, Jesus insists that fasting is inappropriate in times of joy. In saying this, he compared himself to the bridegroom and his disciples to the wedding guests. In other words, while Jesus and his disciples are together, it is a time of joy like a wedding feast, and therefore it's inappropriate to fast. 
Jesus notes that when the bridegroom is taken away, then there will be fasting, which implies fasting as a sign of mourning for the loss of the bridegroom and also in anticipation and preparation for his return. Interestingly, when Jesus is teaching, he says, when you fast, not if you fast. And so it is clear that he expects his disciples to fast. And when we do it, we are not to make a show of it looking for the praise of others. Jesus very clearly teaches us, he says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces and show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your beard and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who is unseen sees what is done in secret and will reward you. So fasting is linked to anticipation of and preparation for the Lord Jesus. And so Lent is a great time of penance and atonement for sin in preparation for the celebration of the glorious resurrection of the Lord at Easter. By trying to die to sin during Lent, we prepare ourselves to rise to new life with Christ from Easter Sunday. And so fasting and abstinence are integral to that preparation for several reasons. Because they help us to build virtue. It helps develop self-mastery. And it helps us to avoid sinful tendencies that could ultimately lead to a spiritual death and the cause of mortal sin. Fasting was an important weapon of Jesus in his battle with the devil in the desert. And it needs to be a weapon that we also use to gain the strength to avoid and resist temptation with the help of God's grace. St. Basil the Great put it very simply. He said, the fast is the weapon of protection against demons. In Mark's Gospel, we see an example of this. We read that on one occasion, Jesus' disciples discovered that they were unable to cast an evil spirit out of a young boy. And when they asked Jesus why they failed, Jesus replied, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. Similarly, if we are ever plagued by a serious sin, which has become a habit, fasting as well as prayer is often needed to break free from that sinful habit and, of course, the grace of a regular confession. Today, many Catholics fast and abstain only on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and abstain from meat on other Fridays of Lent, which is the minimum required by the precepts of the Church. But in ancient times, the 40-day period of Lent sometimes involved extended and more austere fasts as some Catholics still practice today. For example, some Catholics fasted each of the 40 days of Lent up to the ninth hour, that was 3 p.m., which was the hour that Christ gave up his spirit on the cross. The intent was to unite one's suffering through fasting to the passion of Christ. And since our Lord's suffering ended at the ninth hour, so too was the fast ended. What is clear in all this is that the ancient tradition of fasting in order to unite oneself to Christ, do penance in atonement for sins, and prepare for the celebration of the resurrection is an integral part of the Christian life. So let's now look at the spiritual benefits of fasting. As mentioned earlier, there are many proven bodily health benefits to fasting, which lead people to undertake it for purely physical reasons. But as Christians, we know that we should not only strive to be physically healthy, but also spiritually healthy in view of our eternal life. And that is why many Christians fast. They know that there are spiritual benefits to fasting, even if maybe they are not too sure what they all are. So let's examine what they might be, because it's usually only when somebody realizes the real benefits of doing a certain action that they are motivated to undertake it. And being a good Dominican, I'm going to defer to the authority of our beloved St. Thomas Aquinas on this topic. Because St. Thomas teaches that fasting is practiced for a threefold purpose. Firstly, he says, we fast in order to bridle the lusts of the flesh. We fast in order to bridle the lusts of the flesh. Secondly, we fast in order that the mind may arise more freely to the contemplation of heavenly things. And thirdly, we fast in order to satisfy for sins. As, as it's written in the book of the prophet Joel, be converted to me with all your heart 
in fasting and in weeping and in mourning. St. Thomas is pointing to some well understood truths in this Catholic spiritual tradition in terms of the spiritual benefits of fasting. So let's unpack these three benefits a little more. First, St. Thomas notes that fasting helps to bring the body or the flesh under the soul's control. When we fast, we force the body into compliance, which builds self-control and self-mastery, two important virtues in the Christian life. St. Paul speaks about how the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and vice versa. And so fasting helps to rectify this disorder bringing the flesh under the spirit's control, as it should be. Secondly, St. Thomas points out that fasting tends to raise our mind and our heart to heavenly things, toward the contemplation of God. And so fasting empowers us to pray, to enter into conversation with God. It focuses the intellect on seeking to know God and the will to obtain God as its greatest good. It helps to purify the desires and aspirations of the soul, toward the divine beauty and truth of God. Christians who have walked the path of spiritual perfection for some time often report having had powerful experiences of the presence of God while they fasted. And this is because God finds our acts of voluntary suffering for the love of him irresistible. And then thirdly, St. Thomas notes that fasting is a means of atoning for our sins. Fasting is a means of taking responsibility for our sins. It helps us to make amends before God for those times when we have offended him or others or his church. And this is not to say though that fasting grants forgiveness from the guilt of our sins. We obtain that forgiveness for our sins by virtue of Christ's merits, his saving death and resurrection. And of course we obtain that most beautifully in the sacrament of confession. Nevertheless, we can make amends before God for our sins through acts of penance, like fasting. Because we are sinners, the Church teaches that all Christians are required to do penance. In other words, repentance and penance go hand in hand. And we see this most particularly in the Sacrament of Confession, when all penitents, once they confess their sins, are given a small penance by the priest. And so fasting as a penance, or part of a penance, can help us to both atone for and overcome certain sins in our lives. The example of food, if gluttony is something that we may struggle with, with food or drink, giving up certain foods, particularly those that are the unhealthiest for us, or giving up alcohol for a period of time is always going to be very beneficial for us. And if we find it difficult to even maybe begin giving up something that we know is a bit of a struggle, then that can be a clear sign that there's a problem, or maybe even the beginnings of an addiction, because we don't even maybe have the strength to begin to give it up. So that's where we really need to bring prayer in and ask the Lord to really help us and motivate us and give us the grace to be able to start fasting and pulling away from these things that are maybe starting to control us. When we feel physical hunger, it can also be a reminder to us that it is not just our body that needs to be fed. Our soul hungers for God and needs constant spiritual nourishment. When we are consumed by physical pleasures and gratification, we may neglect that nourishment of our soul. And fasting can then help us to restore the balance between the life of the flesh and the life of the spirit. When we fast, our senses often become sharper and we can be better understand that God is the source of the only food that lasts forever. Fasting also helps us to grow in gratitude for what we have. It's hard to be grateful for food when we are constantly gratifying ourselves with it but if we deprive ourselves of it or of a certain amount of it, it helps us to understand or appreciate maybe what we've taken for granted up to that point. Fasting teaches us to appreciate food, but also many other blessings and pleasures in our lives. Fasting also helps you to realize how dependent you are on God and on the Holy Spirit, and he unites you to the suffering Christ and increases your thirst for God. So there are many benefits summarized there of fasting. So with the benefits laid out, let's talk a little bit, how are we supposed to fast? The most important fast that we as Christians can undertake is to fast from sin. And that's one of the reasons why 
fasting from material things like food or some other pleasures can help us to get to the point where we can really start to fast from sin. And to be able to have the strength to do that and receive the graces from God that we need, we pray and undertake, undertake penitential acts of fasting from things that can be pleasurable as a, a way of showing our remorse for our sins, as we mentioned before, asking for the graces to resist sin in the first place, and to make sure that our passions do not control us and lead us into sin and addictions in the first place. Remember, the goal and ultimate motivation for us when it comes to fasting is that we want to gain eternal life with God. That is what the Church wants for all her children, and it's why it encourages fasting. And so during Lent, the Church sets forth the days of penance as Ash Wednesday and the Fridays during Lent, where we said Catholics are obliged to abstain from meat and fast on those days. But some people also choose to abstain from meat on Wednesdays. They choose to fast on all the days of Lent, as we mentioned. It will always be a personal decision as long as the precepts of the Church of Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are followed. And I really want to encourage you, when it comes to fasting, to pray to the Lord and ask Him to show you how best you can fast what it is that he will inspire you to do, and you will be surprised at how he may inspire you, because he'll know what's most beneficial for you and what will bring the greatest number of graces to you with some small sacrifice that you may be able to offer. So pray for the grace to be able to understand that. So, what's the best way for you to fast during Lent? Well, as I've said, when it comes to food, having only one meal a day and a small bit of food in the morning and the evening is what the Church recommends, as well as abstaining from eating meat on Fridays. Some will choose to do that throughout Lent, as we said, but that will be your personal choice. But not all fasting is related to food. Obviously, it can be a great help to us, particularly if that's the passion that's maybe dominating us or we're finding it hardest to res resist. But there are many other things in which we can fast from, things that could also lead us into sin. For instance, the goods of watching TV or using the internet. They can be goods, great goods, but they can also lead into sin. And maybe it's something that people can be struggling with in terms of being led into impurity. Whatever it is that you can identify that maybe you're struggling with is a clarion call from God to make a break from, to turn away from, to ask for God to give you the grace to be able to use these things wisely, but not in a way that is leading you to sin. So whatever the good is, as we said, pray that the Lord may enlighten you and help you to discern. If you're taking a break from watching TV, for instance, that extra time could be used for reading the Bible or reading good Catholic books. Again, remembering that your soul is hungering to be nourished. And as Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And it is that word of God that your soul is hungering for, to be spiritually fed. So allow it to be fed, feed it. Pick up the Bible, delve into the scriptures, read good Catholic books that inspire you and draw you into a deeper relationship with the Lord. But oftentimes we have to make time in our lives to be able to do that. Stepping away from anything materialistic that takes away from our relationship with the Lord is a wonderful thing, and you will only benefit from doing this. One of the great loves that people can also have in their lives is the love of money. This love can often be greater than any love that they may have for God. And this is why St. Paul warns us that the love of money is the root of all evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith. And so to prevent this disordered love growing in our lives, or maybe to help us break free from it, another very important form of fasting is giving money to those less fortunate than ourselves. This is, in the season of Lent, the discipline that's commonly referred to as almsgiving, one of the three disciplines along with prayer and fasting. And Pope Francis spoke about the close connection between fasting and almsgiving when he said, fasting makes sense if it really chips away at our security and, as a consequence, benefits someone else. If it helps us cultivate the style of the good Samaritan who bent down to his brother in need and took care of him. Both prayer and fasting should lead to an increase in charity in us, that is, to almsgiving. St. John Chrysostom famously said, What good is it if you don't eat meat or poultry, 
and yet you bite and devour your brothers and sisters. And St. Augustine described fasting and almsgiving as the two wings of prayer because they are signs of humility and charity. So from this you can see how intricately connected prayer and fasting and almsgiving are. And as Christians we're called to practice all three. As well as fasting from material things, what can be even more beneficial for us and others is that if we try to fast from bad habits. One of the most common sins that people struggle with is a lack of charity. And this can take the form of ridiculing someone, taking their good name, speaking badly or gossiping about them, or just simply being rude to them in person. These are all sins of the tongue, which are often the most frequently committed sins. And so making a deliberate effort during Lent to fast from these destructive words and behaviours is something very worthwhile to do. And to try instead to be more positive about others, encouraging of them, and charitable towards them. After all, Jesus didn't command us to love our food, our money, or our TV shows. He asked us to love him and to love one another. When our lives are not God-centered, we can end up loving material possessions more than people, and certainly more than God. So fasting helps us to get our priorities right again. It reminds me of the New Year phenomenon. You know, the many people after the Christmas, they go on this kind of decluttering spree, clearing out the wardrobes, getting rid of excess clothes. Sometimes it's to make way for the January sales, but sometimes it's just simplifying a decluttering. And I think about that in relation to our Lenten experience as well of, of fasting. It's a way in which we try to empty ourselves of what may be blocking God's life in our souls so that God can fill us with more of himself. In this way, fasting and prayer can bring us into a more intimate relationship with God. A good definition of fasting is the deprivation of the good in order to make a decision for a greater good. And that greater good is God. When it comes to fasting, it's important to remember that it is a gift from God. And so to be able to fast well, you need to ask God for his help. Prayer and fasting go together. So don't forget to pray, asking God for the grace to be able to fast well. And if you fail, if you fall down, you fail in your fasting, just start again. Just ask the Lord again for that repeated grace to begin again, to begin you, and to offer that small sacrificial gift to him in thanksgiving and love for what he's offered for us. And finally, remember that the purpose of fasting is to help the soul turn back to God through the conversion of heart. For this to happen in our lives, we need to constantly ask the Holy Spirit for his help in teaching us how to fast as well as how to pray. So in conclusion, I just want us to recount the benefits of fasting so that hopefully going away from this talk, you will be motivated to continue with your fasting or to begin fasting during this Lenten period. And so fasting helps to bring the body or the flesh under the soul's control, which is very important. That fight between spirit and flesh that St. Paul speaks about. It helps us develop the virtue of self-mastery and self-control, which in turn helps us to grow in our holiness of life. It helps to raise our mind and heart to heavenly things, to have more of a focus on God than on material things or the things around us. It also me it's a means of atoning for our sins and asking for God's blessing. It helps us to grow in gratitude also for what we have so that we don't take it for granted. And finally, fasting helps us to, us to realize how dependent we are on God for everything. When we make little sacrifices, it's a realization of just what he has sacrificed for us and how much we're loved because of that. So during this Lenten season, I pray that it will be a great time of grace and as you continue to pray and fast during this season, that the Lord may bless you abundantly and draw you closer to him each day. God bless you.